a that is special topic that God laid on our heart. Our theme for the month of this um, November, excuse me, is victory. That's our theme for the month of November. It is victory. And last we look at gossiping and backbiting. We looked at that. But our theme for the month of November is victory. Victory for those uh, where you come from. Where, where I am is victory. So God is telling us that it's our month of victories. Our month of multiple victories. And I decree and declare that not only will you um, not ex uh, not only that the month will, this month will not pass by, excuse me, without you experiencing the victories of God in your life in Jesus' name. This month will not pass by. You know, we're in the eleventh month, and in the eleventh hour, God shows up. In the eleventh hour, God does great things. So I'm joining my faith with yours that from now on, everything that has stopped you will no longer stop you again. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will experience great and lasting victories. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And the topic God gave us for today is a new thing. And of course, if God is giving that topic, it means that the portal has been opened in the atmosphere. The portal is open and God is set to do new things in your life and in my life. And I pray that God will do great and mighty things in our lives. In Jesus' name. Father, as we go into your word, speak to us. Open our hearts to receive from you and let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. So we're looking at victory over your past. Everybody has a past. Everybody has a past. 2 Corinthians 5.17 If any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have died. Some say old things have passed away. And all things have become new. Everybody has a past. There is nobody that does not have a past. And God is letting you, me and you know that there is victory in Jesus. God is saying to you and me, that no matter what you have gone through, no matter what you have done in the past, you have the victory. And I pray that we will experience great and lasting victories in Jesus' name. Amen. Isaiah 43, 18-19 is a popular scripture. Let's put our eyes on it. Isaiah, Isaiah 43, 18-19. Do not remember the former things. Remember not the former things. Don't put your mind on the former things. Nor consider the things of old. You were duped in the past. Don't consider it. Somebody broke your heart in the past. Don't consider it. God is saying to you and me, do not remember the former things. Nor consider the things of old. And he said, behold. That means see. When he asks you to behold something, says what? See, I will do a new thing. Say loud, amen. I will do a new thing. Say amen. Now we shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I mean, that, that's an anomaly. But God is saying that I am in the business of doing the impossible. I am in the business of doing great things. So what is God saying to you and me here? That we should not remember the former things that we should take our eyes away from the former things. Let me say something before we start. The ability to remember is a gift. The ability to recollect things is a gift. If somebody is suffering from dementia, amnesia, or uh, <laughs> is suffering from, what's the name of that disease? I think the Ronald Reagan died from that disease. I forgot what disease. Where people just lose their memory. Someone can please remind me. If they are suffering from that disease, it's a problem. May God help us in Jesus' name. So God is saying to you and me that the ability to remember is a gift on its own. Some people, their brain has, is scrambled. Nothing sticks in their brain. So the ability to remember is a gift. When you read for an exam and you go and take the test, the ability to remember what you have read is needed to pass your exam. Amen. So the ability to remember is a gift. There are memories, good memories that you've had from your childhood, if you had one. Memories you had growing up, memories in your marriage, memories of your children, memories of, of great things that happened. Maybe when you gave your life to Jesus, when you were filled with the Holy Spirit, things that you did for God. These are memories. So God is saying the ability to remember is an awesome gift. Those that can't remember is a problem. People that forget names easily. <laughs> God will help us in Jesus' name. But there's an instance that God is saying here that God admonishes us that we should forget. And God is saying, forget the former things. There are times where you need to forget some things. 
So when God is saying forget, that means it's a conscious effort. It's a conscious effort for him to forget some things. May God give us understanding. Thank you, Sister Finn, Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's is what I was looking for. Do they have Alzheimer's? They don't remember anything. And if you have dealt with folks that have families that don't have that have memory loss, it's very painful. A son can be looking at his mom that is, God forbid, that is suffering from Alzheimer's. And he's crying, or the wife, the girl is crying, like, Mommy, how are you? And he's like, Who are you? And you're like, Are you kidding me? So all those memories are gone. So God is saying to you and me, the ability to remember is great. But God is saying that there are some things that you should choose to forget. If your spouse offended you, choose to forget it. If somebody in church made you angry, he said, remember the, not the former things. Amen. God is saying that some times in your life where you should choose to forget, may God give us the grace to forget some things in Jesus' name. Amen. And I will say something. Your regret doesn't change the past. You did something in the past that you're not proud of. You dated somebody that if you see them today, you almost run away. You did some things that if exposed in the open, you'll be ashamed. You have said things that you regret. Some actions that, you, that took place that you want to take back. You know, I, had, I was reading a story. I think the man said that his father in the Lord died. And the pain was in his heart is that he wasn't there when the man died. Of course, you know when somebody is dying, what they say carries weight. No dead man is talking about what food they are eating. They are mentioning things that are very important. When Jacob was going to die, or Israel was going to die, he caused his firstborn. I mean, anything a man says before he dies is important. But he said he wasn't there. I said it's very painful, even up to today, that he wasn't there to see that. So there are many things that weigh in your heart. Your regret doesn't change the past, but your actions change the present and the future. Your regret. No matter how you regret, this has already happened. It does not change the past. But your actions can change your present and the future. May God give us grace to make wise decisions in the name of Jesus. Now, let's look at Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. It's a popular scripture. I can quote it to you, but it's good to put your eyes on it. Proverbs 3, from verse 5 to 6. It's a very popular scripture. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. It says, you can you start from verse 4? I love that scripture in verse 4. Let me look at verse 4. So shall Oluwashon find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. May we experience favor and good understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. And that says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So when God says, remember not the former things, God is saying, seek direction from me. May God give us understanding and help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we are in the season of the new. God is set to do new things in your life, in my life. God is set to do new things in your family. Say amen. I'm not just saying things, I'm decreeing things. God is set to do new things in your career. Amen. God is set to do new things in your business. Amen. God is set to do new things in your destiny. Amen. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. By the time we meet again, I'm telling you, people will not recognize you because God will have changed your life. God will have transformed your life. The things that you are believing God for will become testimonies in the name of Jesus. So we are in the season of the new and God is going to do great things. Even over America, you know, today is the election and we are looking at the results. I know many of us after this call, we are going to start watching the TV to check the results. God is going to do new things. I can assure you that the results will turn out the way God wants it to. Say loud, amen. The result will turn out the way God wants it to in the name of Jesus. So God is set to do new things. Now, if the prophetic word is that God is going to do a new thing, that means that there's a price to pay to get that new thing. No good thing or pressure thing is free. There is a cost dimension to anything new. If somebody comes to you and says, I bought a new car, I mean, it's not cheap. If somebody gives you a new car, it costs them something. Amen. So there's a cost dimension to new. Anything new determines that you pay the price for it. If you just marry your wife, there's a price to pay for money. <laughs> price of making sure that you have contributed money for your engagement, put money down for your wedding, plus food, plus, I mean, you know what I'm talking about. And if you don't know, you will know very soon by the grace of God. Because for those that are not married here, you will marry very soon. Say Amen. By the grace of God, this winter season, as we are entering into it, we are going to see marriages. In PPC, we are going to be having many marriages. 
We are going to have children by the grace of God. Say loud, amen. Those that are believing God for marriage, godly marriage, you will marry well. You will not mismarry in Jesus' name. So what are the things that you must do to experience new things? Number one, remember not the former things. Forget and disregard your past mistakes. Failures, regrets, your decisions, including your past success. Say loud, amen. Let's join on mistakes. There are some things you have done that you are not proud of. There are things that you have done that you regret. But God is saying, remember not the former things. There are places where you have failed. God is saying, remember not the former things. There are regrets that you have. Remember not the former things. There are some decisions that you made that you regret. Remember not the former things. I was speaking to a man some years ago. And he said that he had an, he had, some girls had abortion for him. There are many girls that he slept with. And of course, they had abortion for him. And he'll be telling me that, yo, like if, that, if those children were born, maybe they would be in their 20s by now. So sometimes we'll be at work and he'll be sleeping, you know, of course, snoring. And he'll just, <laughs> he'll just like spaz. I don't know how to say it. How do I, just, just jerk. And I'll come to him like, what's going on? He say, hey, man, I just had a, a vision. He's like, I'm seeing, I'm seeing, <laughs> I'm seeing them. Of course, I don't understand what he's going through. But God is saying to you and me, remember not the former things. He was not even telling me another time that there was a time where he, he, when he got married, of course, he's married now, and they were believing God for children. First year, second year, he said he felt in the spirit that he needed to let his wife know what he did in the past. That that's what was hindering them from having children. He said it. God will help us in Jesus' name. So he had to let his wife know that, hey, uh, by the way, he had abortions in the past. He did, did not ask, as soon as he told his wife, of course, they had to mend defense and, you know, God helped them. They had they have two children. And this last time I saw him, and some years back now, they have two children. Amen. But that regret is still there with him. But God is saying, even if you have had abortions, you have been addicted to pornography, masturbation, you have done things that are very nefarious, you've taken drugs, you, you slept around, whatever it is, God is saying, remember not the former things. Because the devil will feed lies to you. But God is saying, remember not the former things. Including success. There are many people that dwell in the past. Ladies and gentlemen, I heard it from a man of God. He said, nobody will clap for you twice. <laughs> I like that. Nobody will clap for you twice. You got a good job. Well done. That's it. Keep it moving. You got a new house. Hallelujah. Glory to God. No one will come and clap for you twice. Nobody claps for you twice. You got married. Glory to Jesus. That's it. You built a new church. Glory. Nobody claps for you twice. Forget the past, man. People dwell on the past and they, they've clouded their future because they are still dwelling on past success. God is saying, forget the past. There's still more that God has for you. Unto him that is able to do exceedingly, Ephesians 3.20, abundantly, Above all, you can ask or think. Ladies and gentlemen, if you dwell on the past, you will never make new success. Past success stops new success from coming. Amen. So please keep that in the back of your mind. Nobody claps for you twice. Nobody will clap for you. They will thank you. They will tell you congratulations one time. And that's it. Everybody has things they are dealing with. Congratulations. That's it. So please don't dwell on past success. So God is saying to you and me, remember not the former things. Oh, those good old days. Hey, how about now? I used to be very rich in the past. Mm, how about now? God is saying, remember not the former things. Let's keep it moving. Amen. Now I say something. Remember the former, remembering the former things allows the devil to have a foothold in your life through your thoughts. Remembering the former things. I know we're talking about new things. Allows the devil to have a foothold in your life through your thoughts. The devil is a master of disguise in terms of thoughts. The devil can present a thought to you, and it's up to you to take it or not. Second Corinthians ten five. Let's put our eyes on it. You can you start from verse four? Second Corinthians ten, from verse four to five. I want us to read it together. It's a popular passage as well. Second Corinthians chapter ten, from verse four to five. Second Corinthians ten, from verse four to five. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Verse 5, 
casting down imaginations. That means the devil has come with a demonic thought. You are a wicked person. Nobody will marry you. That's a demonic thought. You did something evil. You stole in the past. Nobody will give you a job. That's the devil speaking. Oh, you did something evil. Nobody will talk to you. That's the devil. The devil presents your case and makes it look as if it's the, only, the worst thing in the world. The devil presents things that have affected your psyche and he keeps pushing it over and over again as people are taking it. God is saying in verse 5 here, please listen. He says, casting down imagination. That means you tell the devil, get out in Jesus' name. And you don't cast down imagination with your thoughts. You cast that with your words. You speak because death and life is the power of your tongue. May God help us in Jesus' name. Many people allow the devil to torment them in their thoughts. Your thoughts can only take place if you allow it. Okay, let me say something now. Black dog. Black dog. What comes to your mind? It just, I just put something in your thought life. A black dog. If I say jollof rice and chicken. <laughs> something already come, you already, I mean, you have seen, you can even remember the last one you ate. The devil presents a thought. He puts a picture and he's saying, do you want this picture? Do you want your picture to align with this picture I'm giving you? And it's you that can determine if that's what you want. May God give us understanding in Jesus' name. Casting down every imagination. You looked at porn too yesterday. And God is saying that you are free from it. You have given your life to Jesus. And you are free. The devil will come and present you say you are a failure. The night ask you to give prayers in church. And your mind goes back. Ah, I, I looked at porn. Not me. Some, the person looked at porn two days ago. <laughs> no. The devil is presenting something to you. It's up to you either to take it or not. Amen. What befell Job was his thought. Job was afraid. And Job said, what I have been thinking has been following me. The devil puts a full thought in your life with your thoughts. People have weak thoughts. I am not handsome enough. I am not fine enough. Nobody will talk to me. You know, evil thoughts. And the God is saying that those thoughts can place a full thought in your life. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. I preached a sermon not long ago dealing with insecurity. Please go and watch it on YouTube. Please, I will advise you. It will change your life. Go and check it out. The grace to deal with insecurities. Many people have insecurities that they are still dealing with. People have low self-esteem. Mental, I mean, oh God. They look at their physique and they hate themselves. No! God is saying to you and me that he created you perfect. He created you good. Look at Genesis chapter 1. And God saw that what he made. He saw that he was very good. Amen. Please watch that video and you'll be blessed. Go on YouTube and watch it. I just posted it not too long ago. The devil uses your thoughts as a foothold in your life. You have to be careful the thoughts that you think. May God give us understanding. And thoughts become actions. Before somebody goes and steals, it's a thought. Before somebody goes and commits fornication, it's a thought. So you have to be careful what you think. You see, you can't stop the birds from flying over your head. But you can't stop them from building a nest. And people say that. So thoughts will fly. It's you that will cast it down. The devil is bringing a hateful thought to make you hate your brother, to make you hate his sister in the Lord, to make you be angry at somebody. Get out in Jesus' name! To make you hate your spouse, to make you be angry at your parents. Hey, your parents have done their best. It's time to move on. May God give us understanding in Jesus. Let's finish the scripture. Verse 5. Cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself Exalting itself against the knowledge of God. The devil is bringing something that is a lie and you are believing it. We will not believe the lies of the enemy in Jesus' name. Say loud, amen. We will not believe the lies of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, those demonic thoughts that the devil is bringing at you, cast it down. Those devilish thoughts that the enemy is bringing at you, cast it down. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. I am bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You lost something. God hates you. God does not hate anybody. God is love. God is love. Anything that he did, see, people are angry at God. Can you carry God to court? You are angry at God. The devil is telling you that where, where was God? And many times you entertain those thoughts. Where was God when this was happening? Where was God when this, this, this thing took place? God was in on his throne. Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. God was there. See, better is the end of everything than the beginning. You may not see the full picture, but God is working everything in intricacies. Amen. 
Let me give you an example. I was praying today. I went to church to pray. So I was at church before I came back home. And my mind went to, there was one girl I was talking to in the past. <laughs> I remember I just got my first good job. I just put it that way. I used to work many jobs before. So I got it. So I was like, I mean, thank God I got this job. So the next thing is marriage. I, I even remember the age where I was. I won't tell you how old I was then, but it's a couple of years ago now. So I was talking to this guy. I've known her for years. Like we've known each other. So I, I was like, oh, okay. Thank you, Jesus. Since now, at least I have a job. At least now I can go and marry. So I now was chatting with her. We used to chat. And I used to drop hints like, hey, man, you know, I'm feeling you. This time. <laughs> me, I'm not someone that is around me. I'm a, I'm a... <laughs> the way I go, okay, I'm a straight shooter. I don't do corner corner. That's not, that's not my own. <laughs> you, know, you know where I stand. That's my own personality. So um, I, I, so the girl was like, okay, you know, let's see. I mean, there's somebody else in the fray, but let's see. So we used to chat. So on one day, uh, everything aligned. I was fasting and praying. I would look like a stick. Oh, God. <laughs> I can't forget. Fasting, prayer. I was skinny. I borrowed my dad's suit, wore his shirt, looked good. And I went to propose to the girl in person. I mean, I've been dropping hits. We've been chatting now. So when I say, hey, I want to marry you, I mean, I've been praying about this. You know, I was very direct. And guess say, please, they will mention that thing again. <laughs> it's funny now. Please, I'm not interested. Oh, more that thing. <laughs> See, I'm sharing this because I've overcome it. The first thing I did, I went to go and break my fast. I mean, there's no need to fast again. <laughs> I saw somebody selling rice. I was in, I mean, it was in Texas. So, I mean, I can tell you, I, the person was selling, is it your love rice? I went to go and eat. I mean, I can't keep myself. I, I ate. I ate. I ate very well. I ate. And I sat in the car. I was just looking. I think my mom now saw me. I think my parents drove in. And they saw me. They said, yeah, what was the result? I said, hey, she said, no. And they said, you're very calm. <laughs> Maybe they thought I'll start crying. You are, you are calm. I, just, I was just looking. So, after I said, what happened to you inside this car? So, I went to the church. And you know, guess what? The pastor said preaching on faith. I mean, below this courage. I don't like anything below this courage. If you can put it there, that was it. The pastor said preaching on faith. What faith was about? The thing jacked up my spirit, man. I was, I was looking. And it was cold because I fasted everything. All the AC. Every time I, I was just sneezing. Oh, God. But if you, people, that incident, it has become a lifetime sorrow for some people. Hey, somebody broke, somebody broke my heart. Oh God, they will not, they will not excel. I swear for, hey, no, 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 no. Remember not the former things. Remember not, I know if I married immediately, you don't think that it's after one year, after two years, after three years. <laughs> oh Lord have mercy. Hey, remember not what? Because the former things, the devil brings as a foothold in your life. If I didn't tell you, you know. You will know. If I didn't say anything, how will you know? So there are many things the devil is bringing to you and you are taking it hook, line, and sinker when it's a lie. So many people have been rejected by men or women, by significant other, and they, they, look, they see themselves less than who God has called them. Nobody likes me. I am fat. I am this. I am that. No! God has great plans for you. And I pray that the plan of God will come to pass in Jesus' name. Amen. So, I put here number one. The more we dwell on the past, the more power we give the devil to feed us lies. The more we go, and that's where depression comes in. Because you keep listening to the lie of the enemy, you keep going on that path, and in the presence of God, there's fullness of joy. You have ignored the joy of the Lord, you have ignored the presence of God, and you are feeding the, entering the lies of the enemy. And what happens? It dominates our present thinking and distorts our future hope. May God help us in Jesus' name. Number two, it hinders your transition to where God is taking you. When you dwell on the past, it hinders where God is taking you. Those that are stagnant in most cases are still dwelling on the past. Forgive me, I'm not trying to be, because of course there's curses, there's spiritual bondage, there are evil. Many people that are stuck in the past, they never move forward. Some of these angry at their spouse, that, what the spouse did in 1982, eh? almost 44 years ago. <laughs> and they remember it like yesterday. I remember he came and shouted on me. He came and shouted on me. And that, sister, move on. Go help us in Jesus' name. I talked to a man. I'm saying all this because it's a foothold. This man is a good man. The man divorced in 2007. What in 2007? He's 17 years ago. 
when the man recollects this thing, it's like, and I know uh, the man had every legit right because it's like he brought the woman from Africa and the woman just, I mean, you get the point. <laughs> but the way the man remembers that story and the way he tells it, and this woman, maybe she has gotten, she has gotten married to another person. Please don't believe the lies of the enemy. Don't feed the devil's lies. Number three, don't let your memory of, of your past or your former things master you. Don't let it be a master to you. Don't serve that demonic thought. Don't serve that devilish thought. Cut the cords of the former things, including the good things that have happened in the past. Look to the future. Amen. So we are not flexible because the, the, this is who I am. This is, ah, if you don't change, let me tell you the truth, you are in trouble. I, everything changes. I went to Walmart the other day. They've changed everything. I don't know the one next to me. They may look more like Target. Maybe because people are going to Target. I don't know. <laughs> if it's Walmart is changing and you are not changing, there's a problem. And you are changing into good things. You are changing for the better. Amen. Number four. He says, see, I am doing a new thing. So please, let's pray this prayer before we continue. Say, my father, I receive grace to forget the past. Pray that prayer quickly. Pray with all your heart. I receive grace to forget past hurts. It can be very legit. Somebody hurt you. Somebody stole from you. You invested in a relationship and it didn't pan out. Somebody used you and dumped. Whatever it is. Say, my father, I receive grace to move up away from the past. I receive grace to forget former things, even former success. I receive grace to push ahead. Pray. I receive grace, Lord. Grace, Lord. To move ahead. Grace to advance, Lord. Grace to move, Lord. I receive grace to forget the past. I receive grace to forget past hurts. Even some people, your parents hurt you. They said things they did. I receive grace to move on from molestation, from, from things that people said are still hurting me. I receive grace, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. I declare and declare that your memory is wiped clean from every hurt, every sting of the past. In the name of Jesus. Maybe somebody stole your members. There are many things that people go through that they don't say. God will heal you mightily. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, he says, see, I will do a new thing. Let's keep it moving because of time. He says, see, I am doing a new thing. Some say, behold, I am doing a new thing. God is saying to you and me, ladies and gentlemen, that is we are in the season of the new. God is commanding us to see. It is not see. It is see. It is a very forceful word. I, I put there with an exclamation mark. I, I got this revelation from somebody. <laughs> so I'm just, it's not my own, but... I like what the person said. He said, this C is not just C. He's saying C with an exclamation mark. And when it's an exclamation mark, it means that, hey, check something out. Behold it. God is excited and eager for us to see what he's accomplishing and how he's working things out in our lives. God is excited to show us what he's working out in our lives. Ladies and gentlemen, we may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. We may endure for a night. There is, see, if you want to cry, cry. You know, sometimes I say it's not good to cry. If you're a man and you don't want to cry in front of somebody, you can cry when you are driving. <laughs> but after that, you say joy comes in the morning. Don't dwell on the weeping. People still stay in the night time. They still dwell in the night when God is saying morning has come. People still stay in the season of the night when morning has come. He said joy comes in the morning. That means wipe up your face. When Hannah was believing God for a child, after she prayed and poured her heart out to God, that was a night season. After she was molested and abused by Penina, joy came in the morning. She wiped her face. She went to go and eat and she had a baby because she encountered God on the altar. Amen. God is accomplishing something great in your life, ladies and gentlemen. Look, see, have hope, have faith. Faith is the substance of things. This is where faith comes in. You see it in advance, even when it's not happening yet. You see God working things out. After that, oh, it happened. It's not the only one. I've, I, I, the story I, I gave you. So people ask me, and they start making fun of me when I go to get married. I say, ah, ah, my wife is already here. They say, eh. I say, yes. Oh, ah. They say, ah, glory to God. I say, hallelujah. There was no wife, nothing. no girl. <laughs> But I was speaking by faith. So one day I was at a party. One man came and said, that's your girlfriend. And I was looking like, what's wrong with this or which girlfriend? And I realized that I told her the person. <laughs> By faith, I told her. So I, in a, and I said, oh, wow, she's fine, man. She's doing very well. Thank you. I said, ah, that's good, though. I'm very happy. I said, yeah, thank you very much, ma. Amen. 
Have faith that God is accomplishing something great in your life. God is working. You may not see it in the physical, but he's working in the background. Your faith should be high that I may not see the physical manifestation, but it is working. Amen. When God and Jesus came and spoke to Lazarus and said, come out of the grave. Even though he was dead for days, I mean, blood started flowing, life flowing to his body. And he came out of that grave. He came out of that grave. I'm telling you, come out of that grave. Come out of that cave. Come out of that despair. Come out of that discouragement. God is saying to you, see what I have for you. It is great. It is bright. What I have for you is awesome. Amen. Sorry, I'm sounding very excited. Please forgive me. I may not be flowing the way I need to flow, but see, see what God has for you. See what God has for you, ladies and gentlemen. See what God has for you. God has great and mighty things prepared for you. And he says, I am doing a new thing. That's a present active verb. I am doing a new thing. So what God is doing in your life is already current. I am doing a new thing. I am doing a new thing. Let's keep it moving because I want us to stop somewhere. Now he springs up. God is saying, it is, it is done. Now he springs up or he springs forth. It depends on the version. God is moving right now. It is doing, he is doing it right now. Of course, Isaiah 55 verse 9 says, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God is moving right now. You are believing God to get a, maybe a new accommodation. God is doing it right now. You are believing God for an investment property. God is doing right, doing it right now. In PPC, we are believing God for fire to fall this Friday. God is doing it right now. We are believing God for 150, 200, 500 members. God is doing it right now. I have faith. Ladies and gentlemen, next time you come, it will be more than this. I'm telling you, I'm speaking it. And let me, this garden we are doing, this was the beginning. Though. Hey, when God, start, those that start with us, they will see that God is doing something great in our lives. So this is not a small meeting when you just come. Oh, I just want to support Pastor Victor. Hey, hey, you are not supporting me. You are supporting God. <laughs> you are supporting God. You are, you are partnering with God. That's what I would say. You are partnering with God. You are partnering with God. Amen. It shall spring forth. That means God is doing it. He's moving. It is now. He said, do you not perceive it? Isaiah is saying that, can't you see that this is happening? God understands our struggle in believing and perceiving his purposes. His question is, do you not perceive it? It is aimed at driving home the point that we oftentimes have difficulty seeing or perceiving the hand of God at work in our lives because of the trying circumstances that has declared us. But God is saying, look inward. Look upward. It is done. It is done in Jesus' name. And of course, he said, I am making a way. I am making a way means that God is actively working in our lives. He's working our situation out. Amen. Say loud, Amen. You know, this year, I was believing God for another job. I was. And um, thank God, thankfully, our finally Lord, Papa Adeboye, declared, is he on, I'm busy 50 days fast, or I don't have any days fast. Please forgive me. And then I said, this one was not different. He said, we should come to church every day to pray. That was not easy. Imagine going to church every day for 50 days. <laughs> There's some, I mean, sometimes I, I had to travel somewhere, but in most cases, I was there. See, I will say something. There are ways to provoke the new. You know, we are talking about it, but you can also provoke it. If you wait for the new to come, you might wait a long time. You can provoke it. How do you provoke the new? By prayer. And I will say add fasting to it. See that this thing does not go except by prayer and what? You can't love food more than your destiny. You can't love food more than what? Your destiny. Your destiny is important. You should have a day in the week when you fast. And pray, not just fasting so hunger strike. Amen. How do you provoke the blessing to come? One of the ways to provoke the new is by constant and consistent prayer and fasting. Luke 18.1 Men, women ought always to pray and not faint. In prayer, you uncover God's purpose. In prayer, you push yourself into destiny. In prayer, God speaks to you. There's so much power in prayer. How do you provoke the new? By praise. By praising God. It's not in my notes. It's just coming to my spirit, man. In praising God, you are provoking the hand of God to move in your situation. Praise is the highest form of warfare. Jehoshaphat was surrounded by enemies. He praised God and God confounded the enemies. Anything you are going through, combat it with praise. 
Praise is the highest form of warfare. Let's look at Psalm 145 quickly. We are rounding off, ladies and gentlemen, and I, I believe you are blessed. Psalms 145. I think it's Psalms, the last part. I'm going to get it right quick. Psalms 145. He said, let the praise of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hands. Psalm 149. Excuse me. Psalm 149. Please don't, he said, let the praise of God be in their hands and, and the two-edged sword in their mouth. So I'm going to get that scripture right quick. Forgive me, guys. Hey, where is it again? Oh. Of course, look at 148 verse 13. He said, let them praise the name of the Lord for his name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth and heaven. And in the place it says, yes, 149 verse 6, let the high praise of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. Verse 7, to execute vengeance upon the hidden and punishment upon the people, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with feathers of iron. Verse 9, to execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all his saints, praise ye the Lord. You can provoke your blessing by praise. Please, you have prayed and prayed, praise God. You know, people fast and pray. You can fast and praise. May God give us understanding in Jesus' name. How do you provoke the blessing? By sowing seed. See, there are some seed that you sow that blood is dripping on the altar. Ah, ladies and gentlemen, you can provoke your blessing by sowing seed. Oh, and you sow on good ground. This time, I've mentioned most of these things before. You are in the month of November and some things have not changed. Engage these three things and you will share testimony. Prayer Consistent prayer and fasting. Decreeing the word of the Lord. Decreeing what the word of God says over that situation. Having a scripture to back up what you are going through. You are believing God for money. He said, the Lord shall supply all my needs. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You know, you are sick. He took my infirmities. Amen. By praising God. Father, I thank you that I'm healed. I thank you that I'm made whole. I thank you that there's no more diabetes. I thank you that there's no more pain in my body. By sowing seed on good ground. Father, this is my salary. I'm sowing it as a seed. My father, this is 10% of my, of my income. I'm sowing it as a seed. May God give us understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. I think we're going to wrap up here. Anybody have any questions or comments? Any questions? Any comments? He said, I am making a way. I am making a way for you. I have made a way for you. God is giving us this season of new things. And I will say number two, develop a plan for growth and development. In this season of new, I told that there is a price dimension to the new. What is your growth plan and your growth map? People start their new year plan in January. Why can't you start in November? Why do you have to start in January? You can start now. What is your plan for this month? What milestones do you want to achieve before the end of this month? Develop it. Plan it. Thank God for even that. We even use like maybe chat GPT to break down plans. Develop a plan. God is my plan. I was discussing with my spouse about some plans that we have for finances. Please develop a plan. A plan for growth. A plan for development. What is your milestone in December? What milestone do you want to eat? By the time you are eating January, you have been running on that plan already. May God give us understanding and help us in Jesus' name. Say loud, amen. Amen and amen. Anybody have any comments or questions? Any comments, any questions? Any? No, everybody is quiet. I, I like uh, Pastor Olayemi. Uh, Pastor Felix, I like it. Yeah. I like his. Uh, I, I like that. I like it. I, I love playing. <laughs> Where well sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anybody have any questions or comments? Any questions or comments? Anybody? God is said to do new things. Sister Mayawa, thank you. Sorry, um, Pastor Victor. Oh my God, this was so good. Thank you so much for preaching on this. I think that. This is something that I didn't even know that I needed to hear growing up in the body of Christ. I feel like I definitely sustained a lot of hurts, um, like from church. Um, <laughs> yes, there's family hurts. There's, you know, parental hurts. There's so many hurts. Right. But I feel like the one from church really like it threw me for a loop. And I remember, um, you know, you've taught you've thought around this topic in 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 other you know other words or in other topics in the past, but I feel like one of the things that I got from this platform is even just receiving divine amnesia. Um, and I remember I remember I'm like divine amnesia, but it's just the, the supernatural supernatural grace or the supernatural ability to forget completely, um, completely forget 
um, that something that, and and you were talking about the man who was talking about a divorce and he was saying it in glowing terms like it just happened and that's where divine amnesia comes in it's not as if it didn't happen it did happen but the sting of it is actually gone or reduced so i feel like this was such a great reminder um faith does not work by love um faith works with love um, so I'm just very grateful for this topic. I'm, you know, just wanted to remind you guys, I've heard this from Pastor Victor in the past, just that grace for divine amnesia to completely forget. And I know that God has given it unto us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Ma. Thank you so much. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. Let us thank God for this word. It is the word from God, not from us. Even for me, if I'm taking God, I'm taking something from this. I thank you, Lord, for divine amnesia, to forget the hurts from the past. Even people that you expect, you know, sometimes even it's people that you expected not to hurt you, that will hurt you. You know, you had unmet expectations. It's the people that you didn't expect. That's the one that even hurts the most. Say, Father, I thank you that that thing is gone. Play. That thing from my parents or from siblings, from family, from uncles, aunties, from a department head, from a pastor, whatever it is. For a boss, it is gone. For a significant order, for a boyfriend, that hurt is gone. Even for myself, the mistakes I've made that I regret, Father, that hurt is gone. That thing is gone. We receive the blood of Jesus. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. I will give something. Please, this evening, if you can take Holy Communion, take Holy Communion and say, Father, I thank you for the new. It just came to me. And Holy Communion, if you don't have Holy Communion, you can use something like a bread, baby biscuit, maybe small juice. And as you take the bread, as you take the wine, say, my father, I receive newness. This month of November, I enter into the new. Please do that and you'll be blessed in Jesus' name. So don't forget to take Holy Communion. If you have not given your life to Jesus, don't say, Father, have mercy on me. Forgive me. Wash me in your precious blood. Take my life and do something with it. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Over to you, Sister Tammy. Thank you very much, guys. Glory to God.